Hey guys, Silver Commandment 13 back at you with another video. Now I don't know if you're seeing this um, when you're watching my video, but in my recording window, looks like everything in my my whole video has been tinted green. Like I'm completely green. My background is like reddish greenish confusion and this jacket is brownish green so yeah it's confusing but hey <laughs> um, I just want to get on here because um normally you know, uh, like, I don't come on here and I don't do Raw reviews every week. I don't do NXT reviews every week. Although I try to. It's just I never end up having the time. I always end up, um, not having the time, you know, because, you know, whatever, you know, because I'm always usually texting my girlfriend, Brittany, or whatever. And whatever. But, um, that's kind of why I haven't made a video in a while, since, um, I believe, like, the last video I made was the NFW title match, and before that was, um, I think Royal Rumble review, I believe was what it was, yeah. Mm -hmm. But I'm making a Raw review for last night's Raw. Um, it's pretty good raw, but the actually this isn't a raw review. This is just talking about the, the big thing that happened last night. And to, actually, yeah, it kind of is because I'm talking about two matches from last night and the big thing that I'm sure soon enough the YWC is going to be buzzing about, and that is the return of the Rock. But first things first, I'm going to talk about the first amazing match of the night. I usually don't give credit to this guy. I usually give credit to the other guy in the match, but not John Cena. John Cena and CM Punk put on an amazing match at the beginning of the night. They have been doing really well on Raw. Um, people don't give enough credit to John Cena because he can't wrestle. But you give him the right person, and he can make magic. Like CM Punk, at the, at the beginning, Randy Orton, um, Triple H at some points. You know, Edge. You know, if you give him the right person, he can make magic. So... I'm really liking this John Cena CM Punk feud. Um, it also helped me want to bet with my uh, girlfriend. Last night we bet that um, I said if CM Punk won, she'd have to do one thing that I asked her to do, regardless or like no questions asked. And if Cena won, uh, I'd have to do one thing she asked, um, no questions asked. I won thanks to CM Punk and the whole wrench thing that was brilliant. But up, I'm real. I'm really enjoying the feud. But I just, I wish Sam Punk could pull out one victory on John Cena that he did not have the new. Ne like maybe he could um, pin John Cena at the Elimination Chamber, for instance. That would be something I'd like to see. Um, yeah. Like maybe, maybe not like start off Sam Punk and John Cena before someone else even comes in. Punk goes. No. I want it to maybe like maybe even come down to CM Punk and John Cena and CM Punk uh, beats John Cena to become the number one contender for the WWE Championship or um, when it's like three or four people in the ring in the shuffle CM Punk eliminates John Cena maybe even off of uh, like you know the GTS or kick or something like that you know whatever yeah. another great match that I have to give props to Irregardless of anything else, Daniel Bryan and The Miz. At first, when I saw that, I'm like, oh my god, they're going to have Daniel Bryan job to The Miz and look like a bitch. But no, they had Daniel Bryan kicking The Miz's ass half of the match. And it was it got great back and forth action. It was, I mean, like, that was a main event quality match. If that doesn't say, hey, put Daniel Bryan in the main event. I don't know what does. I mean, 
I'm not saying we gotta put him in the main event now, but that would be very awesome. But I, I, I think what they need to do is move Daniel Bryan to SmackDown because SmackDown's main event is slowly deteriorating with um Edge supposed to be out out of uh the main event soon. Um, you know. Or it's no not out of the main event, but out of WWE soon. Um and uh all this other, I mean, like, Rey Mysterio is supposed to be leaving soon. Right now, <coughs> if Edge and Rey Mysterio leave, two things will happen. One, we won't have any established legends unless The Undertaker comes back. And since of that 221-11 thing, it looks like he's coming back to Raw. But it, it, we won't have any established people on SmackDown. Which I'm kind of worried about, but I think it'll work fine because I think Albert, like Alberto Del Rio, Drew McIntyre, Dolph Ziggler, maybe Daniel Bryan if they bring him over to SmackDown. Um, and um, who else is on SmackDown? I'd also suggest moving John Morrison to SmackDown and maybe having make, making SmackDown like the young guys' territory while Raw is the more established guys' territory. That way, you know, we can see them all together, like, you know, we could have great match. I'm not saying we can't have great matches when you put the established stars versus the new guys, but I'm just saying, like, the best matches I've seen, nine times out of ten, are between the new guys and the new guys. Like, Ziggler Brian, or DiBiase Brian was pretty good. Um, Miz, I still don't think is a completely established star, but Miz and Brian... All of their matches were good at the very least. But I think the one on Raw that they had, it's been a while since I've seen any of the others. But that's the best one I've seen. Let me put it that way that I can remember. But yeah. Um, I was really impressed and I love Daniel and I hope the best. I mean, I'm serious. I want Daniel to hold the WWE Championship or the World Heavyweight Championship or something like that. You know, I want him to be that. I want him to be the man in the big company. Because if anybody deserves it, it's Daniel Bryan. You know. Next thing to talk about, The Rock's return. Um, I am pretty excited about this. You may know, I'm not the greatest fan of The Rock. But that's really only because he ditched the WWE. If he hadn't have left in 2003, like if he hadn't have left to become an actor in 2003, if he had retired, just retired, I would be fine with him. It's just the fact that the reason he left was to become an actor kind of pissed me off. I don't like people who sell out, even if it's a good reason. Irregardless, to me, I don't like sellouts. You know, that probably fucked up my video, but who cares? It's just my speakers give off static whenever they're on and nothing's going through them. But um, The Rock. Um, I don't. Um. What I'm trying to figure out, though, is if he's going to... Is he going to be on every Raw until WrestleMania, and maybe even more after WrestleMania? Is he going to be on every Raw and SmackDown up to WrestleMania, and even past, maybe? Is he going to be on all shows until WrestleMania? That, I think, might be a tad bit of overkill. If they put him on Raw, NXT, and SmackDown all the way to WrestleMania. You know. Um... That would be a tad bit of overkill for me, in my opinion, of course. Um, but, you know, I could see maybe him on um, every uh, Raw and SmackDown to WrestleMania, and maybe even past. But if he was going to stay past WrestleMania, I would want him to stick to one brand. Whether that be, you know, Raw or SmackDown. I don't want him to stick to one brand, you know. Just one, like. Leave him there. Have him rock that brand for a while, you know. Whether that be Raw or SmackDown, it really doesn't matter to me. I watch both. It's not like I only watch one. If I only watched one, I'd be like, put him there! I would actually prefer him on Raw, though, if I had to make a choice, because I kind of like the whole idea of SmackDown being the young guy's show, you know. It, you know, it's good, and, um, and I really think they should have all the divas on one show. 
I really do. Um, like, just... Uh, it made... It makes zero sense to have all the divas, but... You have to listen to it. It makes sense with the tag teams because there's not very many tag teams in WWE. It makes sense there. Most of their tag teams are on superstars anyway, which never go anywhere in Raw or SmackDown. But the main teams that are, there are not very many. There's Nexus, Core, um, Santino Morello and Vladimir Kozlov, the Usos. Um, and I think that's it. I'm going to think. Yeah, that's it. Ever since the heart, there's only four tag teams in the tag team division of WWE. But um, yeah, that is um not very nice. That is um, but okay. That that makes it okay because there's two tag teams on Raw, two tag teams on SmackDown, so it makes sense. To have the tag team titles be able to go to either show, making it, making put or bringing them together. Now with the uh, Davis title, it makes absolutely no sense. I mean, like the, the women's slash divas division needs to have two titles. If they're gonna have, if they're gonna have divas on two different brands, they need to have two different titles. Because one, it gives more of the divas an opportunity to have um, my or um, TV time and mic time and all that. And it also has gives um, the divas a, a bit better opportunity of becoming, you know, the divas champion or the women's champion, whatever it may be. Um, I think the the decision to unify the divas and women's title was a horrible decision. Um, it may have sounded like a good decision at the first, but um, it was a horrible decision because the women's division and the divas division is big. Is well, for a women's divas division, it, <laughs> it's big. You know, you got Gail Kim, Nikki Bella, Brie Bella, and all of them, and it's just ridiculous. Ugh. I think they need to split up. I don't even know how I got to the subject, but whatever. Um, I think they need to split the titles back up, put one on each brand, or release a lot of the divas they don't use, because there are some they don't use, and put the divas title like s securely on Raw, or securely on SmackDown, and put all the divas there. Now, not to say that they can't appear on either show, but I'm just saying, like, they would be securely on this one brand. That way, there's not, like, it's kind of better that way, in my opinion. Just my opinion. <sighs> but, um, to recap, Daniel Bryan Miz and CM Punk Cena was great last night. I'm really happy The Rock's back, and I hope he does well, you know, and I hope, you know, he, I, don't, I don't know if he's going to return to have a match at WrestleMania, or if he's going to return just to, uh, just to return and be an ass, and raw, you know, if he's just returning to do that, you know, I'm, I really don't see him being, having the need of him hosting WrestleMania. But I'd love to see him come back and have a couple matches, maybe in the ring on the way to WrestleMania and have a match at WrestleMania, or something like that. That's what I'm really looking forward to from The Rock. Now, I love his promos just as much as the next guy. I just would prefer him do in-ring stuff, because it was, that stuff is phenomenal. But um, that's all I'm going to talk about. I'm running out of time. Please comment below on what you think of what's going on with um, what, what happened on Raw last night. And the Divas Division, which I sparingly talked about in my video because I got distracted and sidetracked. But still, you know, it's a fairly decent target topic. So, post the comments below on your thoughts on Raw last night and the Divas Division. Peace. Have a great time.